videos. So that's me. I'm at Songdar.io. Um, so I'm actually visiting from Sydney this week. The whole, I'm, I work for a startup called dGraph, and we are building a uh, very scalable distributed graph database. And, but uh, in my day job, I find myself writing a lot of JavaScript and Golang. But my first job out of college was Ruby on Rails. Uh, I wrote a lot of Ruby. And I left my heart in Ruby community, so I find, my, find myself again in the Singapore Ruby community. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm here to tell you that using SQL in your Ruby apps might be slowing you down. So how many people use graph database in production environment? So there are many applications and many problems that are better solved with graph databases than uh, SQL databases. And I'm here to show you a demo. So to make my point, this is my plan. First, I'm going to, sh I'm going to showcase what graph database really is, what graph databases are good for. And I'll jump into the demo uh, straight away. So graph database stores your data in nodes and edges. So something like this. So these circles are nodes, represents an entity. And edges are uh, lines connecting between the nodes. So graph database is really good for edge traversals, like traversing the edge between two different nodes, because it's almost free in, um, in terms of uh, complexity. Also, it's optimized for key value lookups because traversing edge is really cheap. So this is Facebook op open graph. So you can represent people as nodes, and you can represent the relationship between the nodes using the edges. This is Google knowledge graph, which powers Google search. So why do we want to use graph database? Because we can retrieve complex data really fast. And also, you can store data in a more natural way. No one really thinks about your da our data, their data in rows and columns. That's something we are taught in a college or coding boot camps. When we think about data, we visualize them in nodes and edges. So in this demo, I'm going to use dGraph. It's fully open source graph database. It's the fastest graph database in the market. There's, I'm going to show, share this slide. There's a benchmark. And it's the only scalable database in the market. So let's try to use it in Rails and what, how, let's try to see how we can solve, the pro solve a particular problem. So everybody here knows Stack Overflow. OK, so Graph Overflow is something I created as a demo. So it, it's loaded with 10,000 users, 20,000 questions, 30,000 answers, and around 550k edges that are connecting these edges, I mean nodes. So I'm going to jump into the demo, and the source code for the demo will be available uh, on meetup.com. So this is the main page of Graph Overflow. So here on the left-hand side, we see the hot questions. And these questions are uh, ordered in some sort of a some sort of by some sort of an algorithm that makes the most sense to get all the hot questions. And on the right hand side, we have we have a, a list of interacted questions, meaning these are the questions that users have this logged in user have has ever interacted. Either he might have vis viewed a viewed a question or commented on the question or upvoted one of the answers. So to create something like this, um, if you're using Active Record or something like that, it'll require a lot of preloading and lots of joins. Um, and those operations are really expensive to generate this single page. So let's, let's see how this page is actually generated uh, using Graph Database. So uh, just to make sure. Uh, Anybody here use Rails? Show fans? OK, good. <laughs> so this code makes sense to everyone, almost. OK, so we have three different resources here, question, upvotes, um, and answers. So this is a question controller. Um, 
so the, this index section is what's responsible to, for generating this whole entire page. So if you have a look at this, there's a multi-line string called query. And it makes an HTTP call to the uh, dgraph instance, gets the JSON back, and store the um, payload as an instance variable to pass to the view. Uh, people at the back, can you see the, OK, good. So. It's a really simple, uh, it's really simple apart from these long lines of query. So what's interesting is that we can, we don't have to do any uh, active record preloading or joins. We can just retrieve the whole data within a, in a, with a single query. And this query language is based on GraphQL, so it's really intuitive for anyone. So I don't think we don't need to, uh, we don't need to understand the whole thing, but let me just quickly go through what's going on. So this first, uh, first block gets the question to show in the home page. So this, this uh, hot questions uh, are retrieved by this particular query. So let's see what's going on here. So we are fetching all the questions. Um, Question.body is a predicate that are connecting uh, the nodes together. So if there are more than more than zero question dot body, it's a question. We get the answer and store the answer upwards count as this variable. And we store the count of the answer, so the number of answers that this this question has. And we sum over all the upwards count of all the answers. And we also store the timestamp um, created at. And here we are calculating the score. And we're dgraph supports many graph databases support uh, as well as SQL databases uh, math operations. So we are doing some sort of a time decay function so that we show uh, latest question on the top. And here we are doing some um, uh, we're giving each factor a weight so that we can calculate the score. And here's where we're actually fetching the questions. Does anybody here use GraphQL or have ever seen a GraphQL? OK, one person. So I'll quickly explain. So GraphQL is a, a query language developed by Facebook. Uh, it's loosely based on JSON. And you can fetch, uh, fetch uh, stuff like this. So you name your entity questions. And you can pass a bunch of information. You are get, we are getting first 20 questions order by descending order of score. And what do we want to fetch? We want to fetch the UID for the route. And we want the question title, body, timestamp. And we want to um, fetch the web uh, node responsible for writing this question. And for that, we want to fetch the username. So as you can see, there's no overfetching or underfetching. So if you're using active record, uh, you, you end up getting the most, mostly you end up getting the whole attributes of the model. But here, you only fetch what you want. Also, I can quickly go over the interacted question. So here, we do the same thing. Um, we store as variables whatever questions that user has viewed, whatever questions that user uploaded or answered. And we do the same thing. Uh, so we fetch all the interactive question with the with those IDs, and fetch the actual content. So with this single query, you can generate this whole page. It means less network calls first, and it also means uh, because you are relying on graph database, relying on a scalable database to do the work for you. It means that your organizations can save money literally because now your graph database is doing the heavy lifting. Also, it means that your users will experience less uh, latency. <coughs> it will come out as a better user experience. Um, and when we navigate into a question, we see the question, and question type, I mean, 
title, body, and all the answers, and upwards. And it, if the user uploaded the quest, uh, answer or not. So all this information can be retrieved by this single query. There is no join or prefetching. So you get all the question related uh, attributes. And for this question, you can get the first 10 answers without even thinking about joining between two tables. And for those answers, you can get all these uh, all these fields related to that answer and without even joining again you can get all the uh, you can get the all the users whoever uh, that ever uploaded this answer so as I said edge traversal in graph database is free almost so this takes this uh, takes almost no time Okay, so there was a quick demo of uh, how we can use graph database and Ruby application, particularly in Rails. So if we think out of outside of the box um, and maybe stop relying on active record for a while, uh, it's, it's, it might be a better way to solve your problem in your organization. So what's the, what are the benefits? So we again, we let the database do the heavy lifting. It means you can invest less in your infrastructure because database well, Ruby is very expressive and expressive and enjoyable enjoyable to use, but it's not the fastest language in the world. So you, by delegating all these works to a scalable data, native database, you can still uh, keep the expressiveness of Ruby, but s and also uh, get the performance that you need in your organization. Also, you can, as, you, as we saw, we can retrieve very complex data with a single query without even thinking about join or paying, um, paying costs related to the join. It's highly scalable and not, not proprietary. It's completely open source. A lot of companies doing anything s smart are using da da graph databases. Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Quora, everyone. But here's a problem. They're all building their own proper proprietary solutions because there's no open source standard, open source solution that's scalable for everyone. So by using dgraph, we can give the power back to those guys in the garage to compete with the likes of Facebook. So that was how to use graph database in Rails. So as, as I showcased, it's super easy to use any kind of graph database in your Ruby apps. So if you're, if you're solving a very complex problems with lots of joins, it might be a, a good chance to give graph database a try in your Ruby applications. It's super easy, it's simpler, because you, can't, you can retrieve very complex data with single query, and it's faster because you don't pay the cost of joining two tables or multiple tables. Thank you very much. Any questions? So what is it not good for? So graph database is not good for um, databases that applications that require acid uh, transaction. So for example, um, if you're building a financial application like bank, I wouldn't use graph database to store my uh, my financial information because gra many graph not all graph databases support uh, transaction. By so even so, it is true that graph databases databases are really fast to fast to write and read information from, but. Uh, it is at the cost of uh, acid acid transaction of the database. So it's in in short, graph database is not good for any applications that require any transactions. So I'm just uh, trying to understand why you uh, get out of using joins 
is not just like pushed into the database and the database handles it? Uh, so you're, you're wondering how the join is done under the hood. Yeah. So there is no, um, there is no join actually, because the way the graph, uh, the way, the way your information, your data is stored, um, internally is it, they're stored in a way that, uh, to find the information, uh, everything is a single lookup away. It's a point, so we store a pointer to another node. Um, so that's all the edge really is internally. So that's, it's a store lookup, I mean, it's a pointer. So to traverse a single pointer is uh, almost Perfect. nothing. Yeah. So it's in a way, if when you store the data initially, there's an extra cost, but you reap that back when you, because you have to instantiate the pointer when you, when you put it in the database, but then when you pull it out, you can do it faster. That's in a way the trade-off here. Yes, but I wouldn't call it a trade-off because even if you insert something in a SQL database, you also pay a certain cost. And to store a pointer, I wouldn't exactly call that a cost, but it's a, I, I would say that it's a different way of storing the data so that you can retrieve the uh, relationship a lot faster in the future. Any more questions? I have a question. Um, how do you handle migrations, especially if your model changes? Oh uh, yes. So dgraph. Well, uh, I can't. I can't really say for other databases, but uh, for dgraph, we we support schema, and it's implicit, or you can make it explicit. And if you change the schema later, um, all the all the data will be auto migrated. Thank you, Sung. Um, that was the first talk.